and be glad in it. So we are glad for this day that you have made our Heavenly Father. Let your word come to us in a special way. Speak to our hearts, speak to our minds, so that we might know you in the power of the resurrection. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It is good to be here today. We want to talk about the children of God. The children of God. Who are the children of God? Is there anybody, everybody, every human being that is a child of God? Or we have the children of God? Because we live in a world where everybody believes that we are all children of God. Of course, initially, originally, God created every human being as a child of God. But the reason some are not children of God, among other things, is because we choose not to be children of God. Fair John chapter 3, verse 10. Fair John chapter 3, verse 10. It says, In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Hallelujah. So here, what about me saying is that there is a distinction between those who are the children of God and those who are not the children of God. And the Bible says that the children of God are characterized by righteousness. And the children of the devil are also characterized by evil. So the word of God says that in this the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. Yeah. Now he says, whosoever doeth no righteousness is not of God. So if you don't do what is right, you are not of God. But before he said that, he said something in verse 9. He said, whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. So the children of God are those who cannot sin. Because the seed of God remains in them. And what is the seed of God? The seed is the word. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. when, when you get born again, you receive the word of God into your life. And, and that word you receive into your life, that word makes you who God created you to be. It's the word of life. As you receive that word, into your soul, into your spirit, it is the seed. So that seed produces fruits. And the fruits are what the book of Galatians says, the fruit of the spirit. is the fruits of love, joy, peace, meekness, kindness, and all the virtues of life. So that makes it impossible for somebody who has the seed of God in him to commit sin. Hallelujah. Amen. But there are so many of us who claim to be children of God, but the seed is not in us. The seed of God is not in our hearts. The seed of God is not in our mind. And because of that, the devil has gotten advantage because he says that what manifests the children of God is the righteousness. So, something manifesting is showing up. So, for us to know and see that you are a child of God, we must see the life of righteousness in you. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, that's wonderful. When you are showing forth 
who you are in Christ. When the life of righteousness is being seen in you, when the life of righteousness is displayed in you, and then people see you, and they recognize you, and they can notice a God kind of spirit in you. So it is a manifesting you as a child of God. So what manifests you as a child of God is what you do rightly. Okay? So those who do righteousness, he says, he says that whosoever doeth not, that is whosoever does not do righteousness, it is not of God. Because righteousness is what manifests us as children of God. Because righteousness is our label. Righteousness is what tells people or God or angels or demons that we are the children of God. Hallelujah. So it's important. As much as we know that the first kind of righteousness we get as being children of God, when we are born again, we receive the righteousness of Christ. That's what he said in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, said, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Hallelujah. Therefore, the world knoweth it not, because it knew him not. Praise the name of our Lord. So, you, you see what? The Bible says that the world do not know, they do not know Jesus. Because they do not know Jesus, they don't even know us as the children of God. Now God himself showed us love. That is why he permitted that we should be called the children of God. Because we have given our life to Christ. Then he says in verse 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. That's wonderful. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Now the Bible says that when Jesus appears, we shall be like him. Now this means that when he appears, we are going to show forth. His characteristics will show for in us. And then his radiant glory will also show in us. His physical appearance will show in us. His glorious appearance will show in us. Then the world who don't even know that we are like him, they will now see that we are like him. Hallelujah. But this only happens if we wear the robe. Of righteousness that Christ gave us. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. When you are born again, you don't operate on your own righteousness. You operate on Christ's righteousness. <coughs> According to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, the Bible says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So now, look at it carefully here. The Bible says that he made him Jesus, who knew no sin. Jesus knew no sin. That Jesus became sin for us. That means he took our place of sin. So that we might be made the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. So, the children of God have an exchange. We were wearing a garment, a, a filthy garment of sin. That the devil put on us because we live in sin. And the Bible says that God removed that garment. Hallelujah. When he removed that garment, it was filthy. He removed it. And then when he removed it, he gave us a garment of righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That made us the children of God. So, we as God's children are wearing a robe of righteousness. Praise the name of our Lord. Hallelujah. Now, let's see something here in the book of Zechariah. 
Zechariah chapter 3, we find that Joshua the high priest was wearing a filthy garment which signifies sin. Zechariah chapter 3. Now, let us read verse number 3. Zechariah chapter 3, verse 3. The Bible says, Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. Hallelujah. Amen. He was clothed with filthy garments and he stood before the angel. Okay? So, he was standing before an angel of God, but while he was standing before an angel of God, he was wearing a filthy garment. You can believe that. He was wearing a filthy garment. And so, this guy was dead. And the filthy garment signifies sin because he was not born again. When you were not born again, you are wearing a filthy garment and the devil can claim you because the Bible says the difference between the children of God and the children of the devil. The children of God are those who are very righteous and living righteous life. And the children of the devil are those who are simple and living a simple life. So, the devil can claim you. Even though you go to church, you are in the house of God, the devil is still claiming you and say, this is my son, this is my daughter, because he's still living in sin. Now, you can also be claimed by God when you give your life to Jesus. Then, the garment, the filthy garment will be taken away from you, and then you will be given a garment of righteousness. Mm -hmm. Now, when you read verse 2, the Quran chapter 3, verse 2, the Bible says, And the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuked thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that have chosen Jerusalem rebuked thee. And is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. so, so you know what? <coughs> Satan was rebuked by why? Verse 1 says, And he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Mm -hmm. Satan was trying to tell Joshua, that because of the filthy garment you're wearing, because of your sins, you have no right to stand before an angel of God. You have no right to intercede for the children of Israel because he was a high priest and he was praying for the children of Israel. But the garment he was wearing was filthy. And the Bible says that the angel was listening to the words of Joshua, but then the devil, Satan, was resisting Joshua and said, no. You have no right to intercede for anybody. You can't even talk to angels or God because you are mine. You are not a child of God because you are wearing the devil's clothes. That's what the devil is trying to say. So, something happened. Zechariah chapter 3 verse 4. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. Hallelujah. Amen. Wonderful. He says that I have caused thy iniquity, that is thy sin, to pass from thee. And the God says, I will clothe thee with a change of raiment. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Hallelujah. So God is saying something here that he said they should remove the cloth first. Okay? So when the angel said, take away the filthy garments, then he interpreted it. He said, I'll cause that iniquity to pass from thee. So the filthy garment is iniquity and it was taken away from Joshua. Praise the Lord. So when you were born again, that is what takes place. Filthy garments are taken from you. So when filthy garments are taken from you, then you have the garment of righteousness. Mm -hmm. So wearing that garment, you can still go and sin. But when you sin, what happens is that your garment is stained. It will be like a stain. An oil on your white garment or a red spot or dark spot on your white garment a black spot on your white white garment that's what the Bible calls spots and blemishes spots and blemishes in the church are sins that Christians commit so in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 the Bible says that Christ wants to come for a church that is washed of spots and blemishes. Ephesians 
change that to five. Okay? Now, we're going to read something here from verse 26 to 27 that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Okay? Now, the word washes our garments all the time. So, if you are a child of God, you need to be hearing God's word. You need all the time to be hearing. The more you're hearing it, it is washing. When you read John chapter 15, verse 3, the Bible says, You have been made whole because of the words that are spoken unto you. So, when God's word is speaking to you, you will make whole. The word cleanses you. The word purifies you. It sanctifies you. Then the same word will make you the kind of person that God wants you to be. Hallelujah. So the word of God says that. In verse 28, verse 20, verse 27, we read verse 26, I said that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Now verse 27, Ephesians 5, 27, the Bible says, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Hallelujah. So, it has no spot, it has no wrinkle. So, if the church is not washed with the blood, if the children of God do not stay in their righteous atmosphere that is given to them by Christ, we can be full of spots and branches. And it happens if the word of God is not working in us. Hallelujah. And that will identify him with the devil. First John chapter 3 again. First John chapter 3. Verse 8. He that committed sin is of the devil. Okay? For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So when you commit sin, when you live in sin, when you do evil, you are carrying the genes of the devil. You become a child of the devil. Because the devil did sin from the first time. And he adopted so many children of God also to live in sin. So the moment you start living in sin, that is where the devil took control of your destiny. He claimed ownership of you. So when we are God's children, we are born again. We are born of the Spirit. And if you are born of the Spirit, what God expects of us is a righteous life. God wants us to live the way Christ lived. So, children of God are those who are born of the Spirit and of what? John chapter 3. We're talking about the children of God. John chapter 3. John chapter 3, verse 6. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So when you are born again, you are a child of God, you are born of the spirit. This means you are no longer ordinary. You are a spirit person who lives in the flesh. These are the children of God. They are those who are born again. Every human being is a creator of God. Every human being is created by God. We are God's creation. But when you are born again, you are born of the Spirit. Amen. So you are God's bona fide property. God can claim you and say, this is my son, this is my daughter. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And God knows that you are ready to walk with him. You are ready to obey him. You are ready to live for him. That is what happens. Mm -hmm. So, John chapter 1. The Bible says, verse 11 and 12. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Verse 12. But as many as received him, 
to them gave it power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Hallelujah. Yeah. So when you receive Jesus into your life, you are given power to become a child of God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Because you have received Jesus. So once Jesus has come to live in your life, you are a different person. So now, you have received power. God said he came into his own. Now we're looking about the word own, his own people. Now, they were the children of Israel. They were specifically seen as God's covenant children through Abraham. But then, when Jesus came to them, they rejected Jesus. They did not receive Jesus, meaning that they did not receive his doctrines. They did not receive the message he brought from God. That means they rejected him. They did not receive him as the Messiah. They did not receive him as the Savior of the world. So in John chapter 1, verse 12 goes on to say, But as many as received him, to them gave him power to become the sons of God. That means he, he gave us power to become the children of God. Another message says he gave us the right to become the children of God. Now, power or right here is a will, entitlement. Something that entitles you to the inheritance of the Father. So that you are not just a child of God, but you have a birthright to claim. Like the sons or the children of the rich man. When the rich man is no more, the children of the rich man have the right to claim their father's inheritance. Hallelujah. They can claim the wealth and the riches of their father. That is what he's saying here when he says he gave us power or the right to become children of God. That means we are not just children of God, but we are entitled to some blessings. We are entitled to some inheritance. We are entitled to the promises of God. So when you are children of God, you are children of God, by inheritance you have something to inherit. We talk about the property of the Father, you have a share, you have a portion in it. We are joined highest with Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So, what the Bible is saying here is that we have been given power to become children of God. Because we receive Jesus and believe on his name. That makes us the children of God. So when we say children of God, we are talking about those who receive Jesus Christ into their life. If you receive Jesus Christ into your life, that makes you a child of God. If Jesus is not in your life, you can't be a child of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Then the next thing the Bible says is this. Still in John chapter 1, the Word of God says something here. Verse 3 says, Which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So we were born, not of blood, we are born not of the will of man, nor of the will of the flesh, but we are born of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So I am not a child of God because I am physically, biologically descended from Abraham. No, I am born by God. Hallelujah. Amen. I am born of the spirit, not flesh and blood. Amen. So we are God's children who are born of the spirit. Spirit. And because we are born of the Spirit, we are not just ordinary people. Praise God. John, uh, Romans chapter 8, the Bible says something. That Romans chapter 8, the Word of God says something. Romans chapter 8. Now, look at it here, verse 14 says, for as many as I led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So the children of God are led by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are God's children because we have the Spirit of God leading us. Okay, because the Spirit of God is a seal 
of the sonship is a seal of uh, the fact that we are God's children. It's an endorsement. It's a sign that we are the children of God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So that is it. Now, it goes on to say in verse 15. So if you claim to be a child of God, you need the Spirit of God upon your life. It's important. So God, the children of God are those who have the Holy Spirit of God upon them. Yes. Because it's a seal of being a child of God. Then he says something here. In verse 15, he says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So the spirit of bondage makes us fear. And the spirit of adoption, okay, makes us cry to God, Abba, Father. Mm -hmm. So Jesus brought the spirit of adoption. And this spirit of adoption makes us the children of God. Praise the name of our Lord. Uh, see, when you are adopted, it means originally you were not a child of God. We were regarded as Gentiles and unbelievers. But now, because Jesus came to die for our sins and we have received Jesus as our Savior, we are now received adoption. Because the Holy Spirit has come. So we can now look unto God and call him our father. Not just our God, our creator, but he is our father. Mm -hmm. So to the unbelievers, God is their creator. But to us who are believers, God is our father. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So, you see, when, when somebody is your father, you relate to him more intimately you are free to go to him. You are free to ask him for anything. You are free to possess every inheritance of the Father. You are free to eat the food of your Father. You are free to sit on the chair of your Father. You are free to enter the car of your Father. You are free to live in the house of your Father because it belongs to your Father. Hallelujah. Amen. So, when we are God's children, we are entitled to so many things that belongs to God that the unbelievers cannot have access to. Because God is not their father. He is only their creator. He created them. Remember Ecclesiastes chapter 12 what, verse 1. When the Bible says, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So their creator is God. But to us Christians, because we have received the spirit of adoption that makes us the children of God. God is no longer our creator. But he is our God. And he is our father. Mm -hmm. And he can look unto it and say, These are my children. Praise the name of our Lord. Hallelujah. Now verse 16 says, They are talking about the children of God. Mm -hmm. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirits that we are the children of God. Mm -hmm. Praise the name of our Lord. Hallelujah. So we have a spirit that is bearing witness in the Holy Spirit. It is bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Okay? So, so you see, that is, the Holy Spirit needs to bear witness. If there is no Holy Spirit bearing witness with your spirit that you are a child of God, then you, are, you can't be a child of God. When you are born of God, you are born of the Spirit, you are born of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit has to bear witness. The, the Holy Spirit is the genes of the Father. So it's the DNA of the Father. So the DNA of the Father has to be in your DNA. The genes of the Father has to be in your genes to show that this is your Father. So we are talking about children of God who have a Father in heaven. And so we need to have the Holy Spirit of God in us. Now the Holy Spirit of God is the Spirit that bears witness that we are actually God's children. Hallelujah. So now if children, what do we have to get? Verse 17, Romans chapter 8, verse 17. And if children, then has, has of God, and joint has with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we might be also glorified together. Praise the name of our Lord. So we are joint has. We say somebody is a head. 
It means you are successful. You succeed your father. It means if your father is not there, you are the one in charge. Hallelujah. So you are ahead. So we are children of God, and that qualifies us to be heads. Heads of God. So that we can inherit God's properties. We can inherit God's blessings. We can inherit all the things that belong to God. Then he says we are joint heads with Christ. So whatever Christ is now inherited, glory, the throne, power, authority, we are also inheriting the same thing. Amen. Praise the name of our Lord. Amen. He inherited resurrection power. We have the same resurrection power. Amen. He inherited the throne. We also have the same throne. Amen. He inherited power and authority. We also have power and authority. That is a sign that we are the children of God. Praise the name of our Lord. Amen. So, being a child of God, it is a great privilege because there are so many things that you have access to that other people do not have. For instance, in the book of Ephesians, chapter 2 again, the Bible says something about the children of God. Ephesians chapter 2, we start it from verse 11. It says, Wherefore remember that ye being in time far Gentiles in the flesh, who are called on circumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. Hallelujah. Amen. First, it says that in the time past, some time ago, we were Gentiles. We were Gentiles in the flesh. And then we were called, we were called on circumcised by the Israelites. And when an Israelite look at you and say you are circumcised, he's trying to tell you that you are a reprobate, you are unfit, that you have no covenant with God, that you have no right to stand before God, you have no right for the holy things of God, that you have no right to inherit or receive anything from God. And for that matter, you are a reprobate. You cannot receive the inheritance of the Father. Why you can't receive the inheritance of the Father? It is because you are a Gentile and you are uncircumcised. You are not covenanted with God. Circumcision, therefore, is a sign of God's covenant. He gave to Abraham so that his seed will become people who have a covenant relationship with God. Hallelujah. Amen. In the New Testament, it's not just a covenant relationship. We are born of God. Hallelujah. So we, we have a, a birth agreement. By birth, our covenant agreement is by birthright that we are born again. That is a seal. So you are children of God. Hallelujah. So it is our birthright, not, our, not just our covenant right. In the New Testament, all the promises of God are our birthright, not just our covenant right. In the Old Testament, the promises of God were your covenant right. But in the New Testament, the promises of God is your birth right. So long as you remain a child of God, you receive the things that come from your father. Everything that belongs to your father is automatically yours. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So now, let's go to... Verse 12. It says, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Wonderful. The Bible says that at that time we were without Christ. That's number one. And it says, when you are without Christ, the Bible says, be aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. When you are without Christ, you are an alien. That means you are a stranger. Okay? So a person without Christ is a stranger from the commonwealth of Israel. We talk about the commonwealth of Israel. We are talking about the children of Israel. Who are also the children of God. Who have blessings to inherit from the Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And it says, and strangers from the covenant of promise. 
So when we say God's covenant of promise, you are a stranger to it, you can receive that covenant of promise. And then he says, having no hope and without God in the world. So children of God have hope and we have God. But those who are not children of God, unbelievers, they don't have hope. They know that they are struggling for the world. They are just working to feed themselves. They are working for the food. They are working for the clothing. They are working for the material thing. Let us eat and drink because tomorrow we die because they don't have hope for tomorrow. Hallelujah. So unbelievers, they are working. Let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. So they want to work and make sure they earn money, spend money, enjoy money, and have all the things of life because what they know, what they think is that tomorrow they will die and leave the world. There's no, they think that when they die, that is all. They have nothing else to enjoy. They have nothing else to receive. So they don't have hope. They don't have eternal hope. They don't have resurrection hope. They don't have hope in life after death. That is an unbeliever. But a Christian has God and therefore yes. have hope. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So, so, because you have God, you have hope. Then he says in verse 13, but now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Praise the name of our Lord. Amen. So, so you see, children of God have been drawn near to God by the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus draws us closer to God. The blood of Jesus brings us closer to God. So that we now know him as our God because of the blood that made us the children of God. Now, if we claim to be the children of God, we are not just children of God by mouth. We are children of God because he made a hard purchase. Praise the name of our Lord. He purchased, he paid for us with the blood of Jesus. Praise the name of our Lord. I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I believe. It is well with me.